Welcome back. We had a great response on our 910 Sports Facebook page this week for our first Fans Choice Game of the Week poll. And fans wanted to see more Coleman at Farwell. We're going to pick this one up at the half. Eagles down 23 to zip. But the defense turning up the heat on the first snap of the third. Farwell's Noah Wilson busting through, getting Adam Stremelo to the ground. That's how it's done. Comets forced to punt, but the Eagles cannot get their mitts on the return. This is not how it's done. Bouncing off uh, Farwell player's knee and Coleman's Andy Drake falls on it. That would lead to this. Stremlo to Mitch Franklin down the far sideline, and he's going to sneak just inside the pylon for the TD. Comets on top, 31 to nothing. Next Comet possession, Stremlo rolling the other way. They like to put points on the board. Tell you what, Tristan Cottrell taking it in from 18 yards out. Coleman runs rough shot over Farwell, 52 to six. Told you they like to score. Let's go above the Mighty Mac. Hillman did that tonight. Tigers paying a visit to Rudyard, second quarter. Hillman up 14-13. Solid defense. Tigers' Josh Reinbold getting the fumble recovery. Fumble Ruski stopping the Bulldogs' drive. The orange, white, and black cooking up some trickery. Reverse Travis Powers powering his way. What a surprise. The Rudyard sideline for the first down. The Dogs D then stopping that drive. And check this out. Ten seconds left in the first half. Clock running. No timeouts. Cool and collective. Austin Trotter dropping back. 31-yard bomb to Travis Myers in the end zone. That's cool and collected. Rudyard up 19-14 to 14 at the half. Final. Hillman, 39. Rudyard, 33. Staying in the UP, but shifting to the eight-player game. The Cougars have been the superior team against Brimley the last two seasons. Bays. Hoping to change that tonight. First quarter action. Cougar D. Tough halting the base. QB Ethan Shaw for a two-yard loss. And then Dane Nelson for the Cougars dropping back. Base secondary. Tight coverage. So Nelson zigzags through the D. This works. Saluting a few Brimley tacklers along the way. Finally being brought down by RJ Carrick. Not after he's already gained 30 yards. That's a great play. Two plays later. Huge stop by Brimley. Riley Sansone causing the fumble. Caleb Johansson recovering. Brimley's offense showing some life. Carrick getting the pitch and earning the first down. Cougars win big, 41 to six. Once again, let's prove that nine and 10 sports overtime covers more ground than anyone in the state. Let's go 190.2 miles south of Brimley to Big Rapids where Peck getting the honor of being Crossroads' first eight player opponent. And Cody Arbigo up the middle, still not down by two hand touch rules in the end zone, Peck up a score. Crossroads may not be just playing eight man football, but quarterback Zach Reardon must have felt like he was playing against 15. The Pirates just swarming him, forcing fumbles, interceptions. Kyle Arbago again, peck up 14. Pirates just seem to keep coming at the Cougars with different guys. This time it's David Weller with a nice cutback. Pirates slay the Cougars tonight, 48-0. To Eric Lloyd was in Big Rapids tonight without a bow tie, but luckily for us, he's looking all dapper now. Hello, Jeff. It's good to be back, and it's also good to celebrate National Bowtie with you here, all on Sports Overtime. Anyways, first up for me, Ferris State University was the scene of a U.S. 131 showdown, Cadillac Vikings versus the Big Rapids Cardinals. Vikings looking to replace a Jalen Brooks-sized void in their offense. While Nate Hoke won't do it by sheer size, his shake and sizzle will help fill out the box score, picks up big yardage. That sets up Michael Holdship, the battleship, that's what his friends call him, to hit the outside and score to pay dirt for Cadillac's first touchdown. Now, Lewis Finch was Brooks' favorite wideout last year, but now he's taking over at quarterback and taking over the game with his legs. 39 yards down the left sideline, and refs say he was in before the fumble. Vikes up big after one, up even more at the end, winning 58 to 13. Our trip through the CSAA continues back up US 131 to Reed City, where their neighbors to the west look to hand the Coyotes their first regular season loss in more than three years. Coyotes turning it on in the second quarter. Andre Jones juking left and heading towards the sideline for a big game before being shoved out. Oh, wait, nope. Oh, hey, here he comes back at us on the inside, making guys miss. And that's going to set up his teammate Jonathan Green up the gut for the touchdown. Reed City up 25. But with under two minutes left in the half, Brandon Childress marching his Panthers down the field. Here's Damon Nichols for the first down, and it keeps going. And that connection works so well. Why not try it again? Here it is, Childress to Nichols. This time over the middle, he takes a shot, holds on, and scores. Panthers cut the lead, but they needed a lot more in the end, losing 60 to 27. Elsewhere in the CSAA, Nuevo beats Hesperia 35 to nothing. Chip Hill shuts out North Branch 37 to nothing. Tri County beat Lakeview by one, and Everett beat White Cloud 25 to three. It feels good to be back reporting for Sports Overtime. I'm Eric Lloyd. See you next week. Great to have you back, Eric. We've got ourselves a good old-fashioned doubleheader at Thurlby Field this afternoon. TC Central, TC West highlights on the way. And 
got where we are in the show. TC West students, help me out. 